Welcome back to Short Splats. I'm Jared. Today we're doing a little true crime and something very close to my hometown. We're talking about the Eastbound Strangler. Let's take a look at that, among other things. First off, we're going to go to Jimmy J in the Friday the 13th Minicon, May 13th and 14th. Let's check it out. Friday the 13th weekend, May 13th and 14th. It is all going down right here on the grounds of the Blair's Town Diner. Laura Marie Taylor, Ron Milky, Ron Sloan, Debbie Voorhees, Tracy Savage. I mean, we have a lineup of guests coming out for the weekend. And not only are we celebrating Friday the 13th, but we are celebrating 13 Fanboy. And with that being said, we have the lead actress, Haley Greenbauer herself, making her way to Blair's Town. This is history in the making, folks. Get your tickets now. F13 Minicon. That eventbrite.com. That is F13 Minicon. That event right.com Jason Jason's here early folks like I said it's gonna be a killer weekend in Blairstown going down at the iconic Blairstown Diner be a part of the history in the making we'll see you there Friday the 13th Minicon, Friday, Saturday, May 13th and 14th, Blairstown Diner, Blairstown, New Jersey. Like I said in the previous post, I really don't think this should be called a Minicon because they got a lot of guests coming. So, we have some haunts opening. We have Field of Screams open May 13th and 14th. Right now, if you go buy tickets, it's buy one, get one for each night. So, you can get two nights of haunts for the price of one. Let's go. The original Field of Screams. They'll be celebrating their 30th year this year. I'm so excited for that night. September 10th, first date we have on our calendar. Once haunt dates start dropping, we'll be updating the calendar, and then we'll go from there. Also open, Brighton Asylum. Can't forget those guys. We will be in attendance. Coming after you, Frankie. Let's hit it. <laughs> They will be open May 14th, Saturday. We'll be there. I'm um, going to try and hit the Minicon in the morning, then head up to there. We'll see. We'll see how this turns out. I'm also coming back from Vegas. A lot of crap going on that weekend. But let's get into today's story. <clears throat> the Eastbound Strangler. This happened in 2006. So I have a couple articles. One's from the press. One's from Wikipedia. Uh, just bunch of information labeled together uh, i learned a lot because i didn't know a lot about it but let's get into it the eastbound strangler is an unidentified serial killer believed to be responsible for the murders of four women near atlantic city new jersey in 2006 a twenty-five thousand dollar reward offered for information has gone unclaimed four dead bodies of women identified as prostitutes were found in a drainage ditch 
much like this one, behind the Golden Key Motel on the Black Horse Pike in Egg Harbor Township. Kind of West Atlantic City, but it's situated on the outskirts of Atlantic City, New Jersey. All of them were face down in a row, facing east, about 60 feet apart from each other. They were all clothed except for having their shoes and socks removed. So here's a view of the crime scene. So yeah, about 60 feet. That's that's odd and bizarre. And it's weird that they put it right behind the hotel. But what do I know? I'm not a serial killer. So the victims were Barbara Bredeur, 42. She worked as a prostitute to support her cocaine addiction. She disappeared in October of 2006, but was not reported missing for several weeks. Identified through dental records, her body was so badly decomposed that the cause of death could not be determined. Molly Jean Diltz, 20, originally from Black Lick, Pennsylvania, she was last seen alive a few days before her disappearance. She was the only victim not to have a record of prostitution, but was believed to be working as one. She was believed to have been the first to be killed and her body was so badly decomposed that the cause of death could not be determined. Wow, so they were out there for a while before we found this. Kim Raffo, 35, former waitress, originally from Carnacy, Brooklyn, who left her husband and children for drugs and prostitution in Atlantic City. Last seen alive a day before the bodies were discovered, she was believed to be the last of the four victims to be killed and was strangled with a rope or a cord. Tracy Ann Roberts, 23, former exotic dancer and originally from a small town in Delaware, who sold sex to support a drug habit. Last seen alive in November 2006 when she was hit in the throat and hospitalized by a man who wished to be her pip. She had been asphyxiated. So here's a picture of the uh, poor souls. Sad. Very sad. All right, so the investigation. 41-year-old repairman Terry Olson, who was allowed to stay for free at the Golden Key Motel in exchange for repairs when the murders took place, was implicated by his girlfriend as the killer. They were reportedly having a domestic dispute at the time. In Olson's room, investigators found cameras, set up, and images of his girlfriend's teen daughter undressing. There have been no DNA matches to connect Olson with the crimes, and he was never named as a suspect. You still, why would you not name him? As, okay. Eldred Raymond Burchell, who had given himself the nickname of the River Man, being a possible reference to the Green River killer Gary Ridgway, was suspected after he confessed to another prostitute that he had killed people. However, he has not been connected to any murders. There was thought to be a possible connection to the Long Island serial killer, but investigators later ruled that out. Charles Coles, a drug dealer and a friend of Ken Raffo, was questioned by police, but re questioned by police, but released without charge. As was Mark Hesse, an acquaintance of Kim Raffo and Barbara Bredor. Wow! So it, we can go down to another lead we have down here but first we're going to look at the popular culture because this did hit some tv shows investigation discoveries dark minds aired an episode on the case in 2012 the case was featured in episode three and four of the killing season the case was mentioned in the 2021 lifetime movie the long island serial killer a mother's hunt for justice which also dedicated itself in part to the four victims which seemingly linked it to the Long Island serial killer case. So, a possible lead is now dead. The killer has not been identified, and the person who murdered Barbara Bredor, Molly Jean Diltz, Kim Raffo, and Tracy Ann Roberts remain at large. In November 2006, the bodies of the women were found in a narrow ditch behind the Golden Key Motel, with their shoes and socks missing and their faces pointed eastward. The women were all likely to have been killed within a month's time span. No one's ever been charged with this crime. But could two investigations conducted by retired Trent homicide detective Gary Britton and a criminal profile hold the clues to the resolution of this case? 
And why are law, of, law enforcement officials apparently so unwilling to consider other clues? This is a quote from the article. I was m working a missing person case back in 2008 for a lady known as Daniel Natal, a known prostitute. Myself and my partner went to Atlantic City. In fact, there were a number of us that went down to Atlantic City and then possibly considered the idea she may have that she have may come into the same individual who killed the girls in Atlantic City. The Golden Key was demolished, but the lay of the land has the same eerie feeling. Now, Natal's body was never found, and there's no evidence she made it to Atlantic City, let alone cross the path of the Strangler, but it's still possible she could have been a fifth undiscovered victim. The background of this is very important because of another case Britain was involved in two years later. Britain was on an anti-gun federal task force when Egg Harbor Township resident Dennis Gaskell was arrested in Kokomo, Indiana for stealing a gun at a gun show. When authorities executed a search warrant, they found over 70 guns he allegedly stolen and stockpiled them in his home. They found this individual to be one of the most bizarre human beings that they've ever encountered. He had drawings that he obviously did with his hand and would depict himself with both male and female genitalia holding weapons. Britton said his compulsive behavior, his obsessive compulsive behavior, came out of the neatness in which he kept his notebooks. You could see everything was in order. Just days after he was told he was being extradited to New Jersey, Gaskell strangled himself with a piece of clothing inside an Indiana jail cell. After reviewing the criminal profile of the Eastburg, eastbound strangler, there are parallels between this profile and the one of Gaskell. Could Gaskell have been the eastbound strangler? It's a possibility, but further evidence and information is needed to crack this case. And here we are, almost two, 20 years later, still no cracks, still nothing. Uh, this pops up on my Facebook feed every once in a while. I guess ACPD opens it up once in a while to see if they can find anything, but... Still an unsolved serial killing. Probably, I don't know, maybe a 20-minute walk from my house that I grew up in. <laughs> Crazy. But this has been, I mean, it. I would love this to be a bigger article, but there isn't that much more information, so I left it to Short Splats. This has been the Eastbound Strangler. I'm Jared. This has been Short Splats, and I'm out.